just double check the measurement, steel is going in nice and fine. We're going to put up tight to this and also add some threaded bar at home. So I'm going to put that in half and can fix the uh, the steel into the pad stone with them. So it's packed up with steel at the bottom, it's solid. I'm just going to put a few bits in here just to tidy that up. Since I forgot to time lapse that bit, bloody idiot. Um, Alex just got the big breaker, put the rest of that down to the same level. So that's down to pad stone level now. So we've got plenty of room to pad now, past that pad. I've just double checked the measurements, steel is going in nice and fine. We're going to put up tight to this and fix in it wherever we can. Hopefully, uh, all the screws land on there, but I can't see it. We've got alternate fixings. I'm using a, just grab a bolt on, I'm using these thunderbolts that uh, JM have sent. So you drill a 6mm hole and put these straight in with the ratchet, with the rattler. And I've drilled it in such a way that the, uh, the hole goes through to the other skin. But the actual hole this side is bigger, so we can get through with our ratchet. So we just put an extension on the ratchet and we can... So basically, it'll look like that on the other side, it'll come right through to the edge. You see it's a smaller hole, I'll show you when we get it back up there properly. And then, um, this is the one I'm nervous about, getting this one right. So we're going to get the steel in position, get it bedded in and propped up with the acros. Then we're going to put this one in and we're going to hang it from this steel, bolt it in so it's suspended. And then we can mess around with it and get it in position, mark the pad stone, drill the pad stone. We can, drill, we can get this all drilled and fixed into position, then we'll put the pad stone in. I think we're going to use the epoxy we're going to use for these anchors, we're going to use that to set the pad stone as well. And that might need building up a little bit, but it's better to have too much taken out than not enough. And then once that's in position, we can get this rascal in. This one. Which again, We'll probably get the pad stone in position for that one because we've got to build on top of that. So we'll get the pad stone bang on, put it in and build on top. And then once that's built on top of, it's just a matter of packing those three joists on top of it. So there's the hole for the pad, that's the hole for that pad. That's just clean out all the shapes. And then once that's done, we'll start lifting this steel. Cool, so we'll be using this today. Nice long six mil bit. This is great. This such a nice compact drill. It's twelve volt as well. Twelve. Um, and I'll be using that the rattler for um, whacking these in. And also, I had some threaded bar at home, so I'm going to cut that in half and can fix the uh, the steel into the pad stone with them. So that's our equipment, that's nearly done, so we're yeah, put it back in town. Just bang on with that wall up there, which brings us to the So our next job is we're going to put an acro up here, lean it against the wall, we've got something to put the steel on then. And then put it on there first and then up onto the acro. Put it roughly in position. And then Alex is going to knock us a, a small mix with his hoe. Where's your hoe? Got 
this from Rhino Build the other day at the shop. It's a bun tool with some motor brake hoe. So we're going to try this for mixing the tool because we haven't got one of these fancy paddle mixers. So we're going to give that a go. Yeah, so we just need a bed for up there. <coughs> so that's it. Knock this bit of gobble up and get this steel in somehow. And we can put a acro down onto this existing wall to hold the steel in place and then we can start fettling the other ends then. So back to time lapse. Well, what are we doing? That bit needs to move, doesn't it? Oh yeah, we put a 3 by 2 in the way. I'll just chop it off with the laser line. A bit back off the laser line. Yeah. If I take to the joysticks right out of the way. Oh, just for you then. Ah, there you go. How's the hoe? It's pretty useful. Well, it's two handed, isn't it? Instead of one end with a trowel. Yeah. Right, we realised before we forgot the hard hats. So, quick phone call to Alex's mum, Christine, and. There we go. She's brought them out for us. So, you now we'll have our hard hats and we'll put the steels in. So, near. We've got hard hats on now. <laughs> and they're, um, these are, this is a perfect example of how Milwaukee do stuff, but better. So it's called a bolt system. And you can see the visors we've got, we've asked for the visors. The visors clip on and they just up and down, clip in and out. You get um, air defenders that bolt on and a couple, there's a couple of lights and all kinds of stuff that clip to them. It's, it's, it's a bit of like, Look inside, just hold that on. It's actually, it's not those horrible straps. It's a polystyrene insert and it's a padded fiber, not fiber, fiber material. And then once you're on, you've got the strap, so you're not losing your hard hat, which is how it's got on. And then you've got the, turn around. You've got the adjustment. So it's once it's on, it's a perfect fit. That's obviously if you're wearing it all day, but we'll just have ours on while the seal's going. But yeah, absolutely chuffed to bits with them. And then um, we asked for a Milwaukee Red, and then just after they brought out Brick Lane Steve and Alex Orange. We missed out on the orange ones, but still. Stop you running into walls. <laughs> Very cool. Right, let's get these steels in. Great. We need an acro up there now to swing it on to.
stable on that brick. That's all right. Right, I need you down here now. It's, uh... Well, I've got it. at the moment she's propped up there. Hey. I'm just talking to, to YouTube. Well, Alex is in knocking the mix up for me. How the hell? It's alright. Yeah. It's not it's not the best for buckets obviously but mm. obviously I feel like if I did this in a barra. It needs it, it needs like a sharp edge, like a bucket towel doesn't get in the corners. Yeah, but it's still really good like yeah. it's actually mixing better than it would with a uh, less strain on your arms for sure. Yeah, so once that's knocked up, we're going to put a bed along there. One, two, three, four. Just under five feet. Then we're going to wise it up with the apron, as we always do. Yeah, so we drag Christine out all the way from home. I took her for a coffee and a bacon butty. So yeah, mix is ready. Is it ready? Yeah. Happy days. Let's get some gobble on top of that steel. Now, see that that back row needs moving because it's in the way of our post. But now we have spare acros, so that one's in tight. As you can see, that the five brick there is about 15 mil out of level, so it really got tight here. So we had to knock, knock the bed out to get it level. So that's level now. We're gonna. Uh, I'm gonna go and get the pad stones because we forgot to pick them up. Uh, but um, thirds is only down the road, that'll be half an hour. Um, so while I'm doing that, Alex took point into two holes where the strong boys were. That is so tight, so that's going nowhere. And. Hmm? Tight to the bricklayer's pocket. Yes. So yeah, um, Alex can do that. Uh, yes, yeah, we've got spare acro, so we can move the acro further along here now. And we can get this post slotted underneath and bolted up and then it'd be hanging basically and then we can do what we want with it and then we'll put, once that's in we can do pad stones so we've got the pad stone to go in there under that that pad stone to go in under that and this pad stone is going in first because this steel can be put onto the pad stone yeah. which is always easier so i'm going to nip off to fairs now and pick up the and uh, six before concrete link over 900 and then Cut that up for the pad stones, and there's our main one that we made. This is for the oh, this is for the post. As you can see, it's got a big plate on it, three hundred, three hundred odd plate. So the plate sits on the end. We've got two bolts going in. I want, to, I want to mark it before I bed it, because even if we bedded that last week, when you start drilling big holes in that, it would have just come loose. So mark it, then we bed it, then we'll attach it, and then it's just a matter of nipping, nipping these up later when we can fix them. So this is going to be the fun bit, actually getting all the screws and stuff in it. So that's the worst bit done. That's the hardest bit. And then um, no accidents because we had our hard hats on. <laughs> so yeah, I'll buzz off and well, let's get sorted here. And you can have a little bit of tidy up as well. I'll catch you in a bit. Yeah. 
There we go. Look at that for a charger. <laughs> people say about um, battery life on these kind of jobs. These people say about battery life on these kind of tools. Now you couldn't pick it up on the time lapse, but I might have a video on on the phone. But um, that we're using battery power, but that was so quick going through there, and when it hit the reinforcing, it was through that in probably two seconds. It was straight through it. And obviously you've got the 115 cuts straight through that, that um, 6v4 concrete lintel and that's compressed concrete, that is strong stuff. I can't tell you how good that machine is, absolutely made up with it. Absolutely love it. So yeah, let's get these pads things in. Have you got a really big uh, bit on the rattle for this? I don't know which we did. You can get them. Should have realised socket set. What do you mean? Well, the socket set just go crank, 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 crank it up with the bloody ratchet. Right, you sold that. Mine's uh, quite hard to. Yeah, I tried it just then. So, well, that's doing it all, bro. You, you do that. Move out your way with this. Okay. Quite stiff, in it? Yeah. I wonder why that is. You did it right? Yep. It's not, not straight. See, if we had the ratchet on this here, the, the socket set, we could have them in seconds. Yeah. Well, we're all, we're old fashioned, aren't we? You know, we're just forgetful. Yeah, you spin that round there to it. Doing, mate, getting down the bar, just taking the weight of the bar so the uh, strain sticking off the box. Maybe just lift it. Bit of ivy, huh? Well, that's nearly there then. Yeah, look at that difference that makes. Side. Let that go now. Oh, easier than I thought. Yeah, now it's now it's suspended, so we can fix it and move it and get the pad stone put in. We need to get the pad stone marked up. So we need to we need to get one fixing at the bottom to plumb this, and then the rest of them can just be rattled off. So that one's going to go into there. That one's going to miss. That one's going to go into there. That one's just going to miss. Luckily they're quite long. So that one's packing out a touch at the bottom. Like that. Now that is bang on. <coughs> Fabulous. Can you pass me a... I think because, because the wall's out of plumb, we'll leave that as it is. Yeah? Yeah, we don't really want to pull it away from the wall. No. No, we want to keep it as close as we can. Right. Our post is installed. 
it's plumb that way. It's slightly out of plumb this way, but it's following the brickwork. If we pull it any further out, it's going to come out past the brickwork. It's not much out, but it's nothing that the plaster can't get out because this wall's out of plumb. So we're going to get these fixings in now. So we get all these whacked in and then probably go for lunch. Right. Let's get the little 12 volt drill. Well, while you're doing that, should I get a... Um, there's a pad stereo in there. Yeah, we need to get a laser level for that first, to get that. I've just started, so it's 12 o'clock, probably about 10 past now. Uh, I'll be back in a second, need to change the battery. It's about 12 o'clock, I'm just having a go with the new toy. I need a 40mm piece from the pad, he needs a 50mm piece from Riz, so he's going to cut it out of the um, pad still, which is nice. Strong. Blades come loose, Al. Spanners there. That's it. Pull straight out. Yeah, cut. Blades come loose. Get back to you in a second. Al, lean down. That's the blades touching the floor. So you're stopping it. That's it. Two. Yeah, so um I've got my pad still in position temporarily. So I'm gonna mark my holes, I'm gonna drill them and put it back. How it's gonna get this pad stone. As I was saying, Alex is going to get this into position before dinner, so it's going off. That laser line is 40mm below the bottom of that steel, so we need to put this pad stone 40mm above the laser line, and then we can drop this on after dinner. And I'm going to try and get this in, and uh, get these two bolts drilled, so we can put the epoxy, do the chem fix after dinner. I'm going to chat with um, Izzy the Bricky after dinner, about half past two, I think. Right down the, ex right down the bloody reinforcing. That's a blade and a half. Look at that. Flute, what do you think of it? Good. Nice, isn't it? We could spend a bit of jar there because of the bloody steel. Yeah. So, whichever one of them is better. I took the blades all right. That's gone right down the reinforced and down the length. Yeah, so as I said, Alex is going to bed that on and get that drilled and put in. And we'll go for a quick dinner. And then try and get ahead a little bit before Izzy rings up. So, we'll um, catch you in a bit. Drilled these out 10mm and just opening them up to 12 to 
We've got a bit of room for the uh, epoxy chemical fix, whatever it's called. Watch that's not hot. And another one of our new toys that Daisy is playing with last night. Tell you what, make it easier. Gravity helping. Picking the bloody thing up, though, innit? Do you want to grab that side? Take the camera. God, just get one hand. Just get one hand in it. We're going to put it up on that joystick flat. Right. You just hold that with one hand. <coughs> Can you know, a dust. Riveting. Watch yourself. That's it. Gobble, please, mate. This is the fun bit now. I can't tell you how awkward that was. As you can see, we've got the joystick under, but there's a, that's a gas supply there next to the pad stone. So I just slide the pad stone in like that. We had to go under the joist up and in. And the first time we did it, the uh, packing underneath slid out of the way, so I had to lift it out again, put it all back, redo it. So now it's in, the holes line up. We've packed it with a load of slate. We're going to pack it a bit more after dinner so everything's as tight as we can get it. Basically, we're just um, packing the beds out with the mortar. <coughs> the beds are compressing down to nothing. Um, very frustrating that. A few um, good jobs time lapsing because there's a few um, swear words there. But uh, yeah, that was hard. But um, we've got as many bolts in as we can. Probably half half of what we should have done, but you can't. There's nothing here to, to, um, to 
that one's okay. One in the one in the top, one in the bottom. So that's got three equal spaced ones. And then this way, I've got one there, one there. And that's it. Yeah, that's it for now. I'm gonna go and get a quick dinner. Let's try and get on the push out as far as we can before we get a our fixed radio phone call. And then hopefully don't get away too late tonight. So we'll see you after dinner. And we're back. It's 2.30. We've just got two bolts to put into there and a bit more slate to put pack in. We're going to mix a bit of extra mortar just to haunch around the bottom of that, just to give it that little bit of extra oomph. Um, steel to go in there. That's That should be a straightforward job. Um, bricking up around that steel, again, straightforward job. And if we've got enough mortar, I might just put a few in here. What I also might do is while I've got the while I've got the can fix, once I burst it open, I don't know where it is. We only really need two two small bits for these two bolts, which I'm going to do now, and then that'll give these stuff a chance to go off, and then we can tighten the bolts up before we go. But uh, once it's open, it's a. Uh, I think you can uh, reseal it, but well, God, that's heavy. That we've had to buy a special heavy duty gun for it. Which I didn't know about, but at least we're geared up for the next one we do. Because this, this is the kind of job I'd turn down because it's complicated. It's the first one we've done like this with the post in it, and um, we've actually quite enjoyed it. Apart from trying to get that path stone underneath there with the gas pipe anyway. But yeah, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pump some epoxy into these gaps so that it's it's held because a few of these. Where this is, where there's a hole, there's a, a small hole on the other side, and that's so we can get the socket in to tighten it up. You just see one there, but um, like that one has gone in. That one is a massive hole, so it's into nothing. And even if it was, it only go into a closure. But anyway, we can put some some of that stuff in there just to grip, just give it a bit of extra, just give it a hand. So yeah, um, once I crack that open, that's what I'm going to do there. Got your beast of a. It is, isn't it? Look at it, triple, whatever. It's, it's um, it's heavy that stuff as well. Polyester resin. I just got the first stuff from um, tool station. Smelly stuff. It stinks, don't it? The van stinks, and that's before it was opened. So this is the the stuff that um, it mixes in the tube. It's two part. So. Oh. There you go. That's the that's the ingredients and the hardener. So the nice long nozzle. I've, I've used, we also bought this to blow out pump. So they both had a good, so clear. I tell you, I think we look really professional over here. <laughs> so that, that's nice and thin, so that can take you down to the bottom of the hole. Give that a blast. Make sure that's full up. There you go. And then same again there. That sounds great. Yeah. Next job. Get your bolts quick. <laughs> yeah, you have to be that quick. It's very far. Give them a It'll just drag the bolts out. So there we go. Just leave a couple of turns on the threads. We'll let that go off. Probably do that last thing before we go. Uh, nip them up. The pad stone is completely bashed tight with the slate now. It's going nowhere. And I'm going to just give this a bit. A bit of belt and braces here. So it's going nowhere. I May mean, as well. You can't use that uh, funnel. It's funnel again today. So no. I mean after after today. 
bit of belt and braces really. Obviously we can't, all the fixings haven't worked out the way we wanted but. It's still nice and solid. Yeah. Going nowhere this. That's the good thing about our, our engineer Danny. He over engineers things. Just don't forget this post. It's holding the corner of the house again. Yeah. So it's, God, it stinks even worse when it's mixed. This must be a premium product for people who sniff glue. <laughs> That's a bit wider that way. I build that out. It'll stick it on like that, like a packer. Nice. I'm getting a bit more mix ready so we can do that whole and I can get this steel bedded on and whatever. You, so that's my task while he's doing that. I'll leave you with Dad. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a wide shot so you can watch everything. Just a quick one to anyone else who's new to this chemical fiction lock. Don't ask there, you can sit down there. Now, I bought this stuff, got back, sat there and I thought, uh, that's not going to fit in my gun. Because it's about, about 70 mil that. So I checked on in the catalogue and you need special guns for this chemical fixing stuff. So I thought, well, bite the bullet and buy one. So I got one for 17 quid. What I didn't realise is, it's obviously you've got the two ingredients, you've got the, the um, I don't know, the, ba the, the base stuff and the, the hardener. So they kept separate in the tube. So this gun has a disc and it has a pin. So it pushes both at the same time and keeps them separate in the tube. And obviously gets mixed in the in the little tube there. So um, I don't feel as bad about about buying a new gun now. So and we've got another tube. I'm going to keep that just in case. What a little pain that was. But it's in now. The bolts just need nipping up a little bit. But everything's tight together now. It was sticking right up that. So that's slacking the bolts off to let it drop a bit. Pack it onto the joist so if the joist is sat on it now we can tighten the bolts back up again, nip, nip everything up. Um, this can probably come out now because this is all rock solid. I'm just going to nip those two bolts up because that epoxy's well gone off. If I give this a tap, you can hear just how solid it is. Nothing. It's all packed up with stuff at the bottom, it's solid. I'm just going to put a few bits in here just to tidy that up. And then all these other gaps. You can see the epoxies in here. That stuff is. Go 
absolutely no way. Obviously we missed a few bolts out, but that, that epoxy's more than made up for it. So it's final tied up now, it's just gone about quarter past four, half four. Oh. But um main thing is we're done here, we're not coming back. Oh yeah, a couple of holes to patch up there. So I need to get on with that while well, let's get some of the tidying up. Padstone. done there we go that was a uh, it was a bit of a challenge I, I won't won't lie <laughs> it was a challenging day but we got there in the end I, w w when don't I say that really <laughs> <It's> just <coughs> another one on the list but obviously it's our first time doing a goal post I guess you could say is that what is that what these are and then obviously uh, where's we got something to hit this with listen to this <laughs> Doesn't sound hollow, so that ain't going anywhere. Very excellently screwed in and epoxied by him, and then we've got that up. That's a, that that became the easiest steel to like lift up. Became the hardest one because of all the faffing we had to do. I had to knock all that down. We had to make sure it was adjusted a bit to make sure the bolts lined up. <sighs> But it's done. Uh, yeah, and uh, obviously before anyone asks why, it's on an angle. We didn't just do that. I think if we did do that, there would be a lot of support for this part here. So obviously, putting that back there where the wooden lintel was, it keeps it all supported across there as well. Obviously all that's going to get redone as well, could be a new door go in, probably bigger, go up higher as well. No, I'm not an architect. But, there you go. Happy days. Thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to give a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see more of this and our other shenanigans, be sure to hit subscribe and tap on that bell icon so you'll always be notified when we upload. That's always a massive help, and we greatly appreciate the support for the channel. This has been stealing and goal posting with Steve and Alex. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.